when we released the first song, first single, Planet Frozen, it was like, uh, wow, seems like people like this mm -hmm. more than we expected. Mm -hmm. But I was already in such a burnout when the album was done. Mm -hmm. I kind of didn't know what, I didn't dare to hope for anything good mm -hmm. at that point. Hello you metal pilgrims and welcome to the new episode of our interview series on MP2 and a very special welcome to all fans of Beast in Black. For today I'm more than happy to welcome the band's founder Anton Kabanen. Anton, thank you so much for finding time and joining me today. How are you man? Oh good, thanks. It's um, good to be here. It's a pleasure man, it's a pleasure. I'm, first of all, are you in Finland? No, I'm in Helsinki right now. Yeah. So. It's good. How how are things with there with the with the new wave and everything? Do you guys see the light at the end of the tunnel already, or not really? Uh, I guess so. You know, sometimes I wonder if Finnish people are even aware of the pandemic or not. It <laughs> looks like some people don't know about the existence of Corona. They act like that, but but generally, it's like the life, everyday life, seems going on quite all right mm -hmm. you know? well it's good to hear i'm i i feel like i'm from Kiev, ukraine myself right and it's exactly the same thing here i mean he yeah, you see people wearing masks at uh, you know at uh, supermarkets and stuff, but at the same time, all the restaurants are packed, bars are packed with people. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, it's it's weird, but uh, but the concerts are still not resuming, so hopefully those will resume very soon, and you know all the metal heads will be able to go back to you know the n normal life because that's, that's yeah. important. All right, man. But obviously, the the big news about Beast in Black is that the release of your third studio album, Dark Connection, is uh, you know is scheduled for when October twenty ninth via Nuclear Blast. F first of all, congrats, man. Congrats on finish it up despite the pandemic or anything else going on around the world. So, can you talk just very briefly about the creative process behind it and how did it form into this one cohesive piece we can hear today, man? Well, first of all, already in two thousand and eighteen, I knew that. The third album will be cyberpunk, mm -hmm. sci-fi, blast. But the song writing, it's the same as always. Like in my career, when I start to kind of select the songs for an album, I go through my song catalog or a section of my song catalog. Mm -hmm. to files. Overall, I have, I don't know, more than 2,000 things written there. Yeah. So. I go through a part of that song catalog and there are complete songs, except for lyrics, musically complete songs and half completed songs, some ideas, melodic ideas or riffs. And al along the way, I also composed brand new, fresh material. Mm -hmm. And in the album is always a hybrid mm -hmm. of past and present. So I cannot really tell when the creative process started because some of the ideas on the album are more than 10 years old. Wow. Some of them are, are totally new. And that's been the case uh, since the first album in my career, mm -hmm. not just in Beast in Black's career, but the, with my previous band, mm -hmm. Battle Beast, you know, the first album came in 2011. Mm -hmm. with that. And it was like that for it as well. Wow. But for Beast in Black, I've got that kind of a method and the new thing is indeed this kind of a cyberpunk profile that we have given for this album, you know, visually and theme-wise, lyric, lyrics-wise. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of a cyberpunk part of the creation creative process started in 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I would never have said that this album or at least parts of it have been written you know for ages already it all sounds very fresh and very modern for me personally right and uh, you know so you did a great job on incorporating the the old material into the new material just just my personal nod to you on this one <laughs> It works. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Man. So, and, and, and as you understand, I was able to listen to the album a bit earlier than you know most of other mortal human beings on this earth. And I gotta say that you know, first of all, despite all of the songs having this cohesive sound, it is very diverse in my personal opinion. Right? It has these tracks which are kind of divided into two camps, with one being very heavy on synthesizers, and with them kind of leading the melody, even right. 
And then the other camp, which is written a little bit of an old school way with riffs, you know, and guitars definitely taking the lead and the synthesizers are simply enhancing the sound in a way. So has that been done on purpose or am I just delusional and, uh, you know, there is nothing like that there? <laughs> I think I just want to, as a composer, I want to keep things interesting for myself mm-hmm. and for the band, mm-hmm. you know, to have this, that's that's not flat, but you know, there are different atmospheres, different kind of uh, themes, you know, sometimes the main theme, as you said, is uh, with a keyboard, sometimes it's with a guitar riff and stuff like that. It happens naturally when you are in the process of selecting songs and writing new stuff, you kind of already instinctively choose songs in a way that the wholeness becomes mm-hmm. enough diverse. Mm-hmm. So. So it's kind of, kind of a uh, not on purpose. It's a wrong wrong word to say, but it's just so natural. Mm-hmm. It happens now for me. It's just the need to have enough, you know, slow mid tempo and faster songs, and with double bass drum and then like really like uh, colorful electronic music influences mm-hmm. from Italo disco and Eurobeat yeah. and some some symphonic influences a little bit as well and stuff like that so do you personally think I'm I'm um, you know I'll be honest with you I'm a you know traditionally a fan of very traditional heavy metal Judas Priest Iron Maiden are my personal favorite you know bands and the you know Motorhead and stuff like that but I did enjoy this album a lot I'll be honest with you so whom do you think it is written for? For what? What's your personal opinion? Is it written for you know, for all kinds of metalheads, or is it written for specifically the this new generation of power metal fans who are used to more synthesizers in in the music? Uh, it's written for people who can enjoy music regardless of the genre. You know, mm-hmm. what of art it is. I think it should work on a really like once again this kind of an inst- Instinctive level, mm-hmm. we we all feel the same feelings, mm-hmm. more based on more or less similar events in life. You know, when we see a car crash, ninety nine percent or hundred percent of the people react to it the same way. Yeah. Same thing with music. You know, when something resonates in the li- uh, listener, if something is good on a really honest level without thinking about before the person even understands what is the genre, if it feels like, hey, this works, then that's the most important thing. And that's what we want to do, like to make Beast in Black uh, content work for every everyone, mm-hmm. you know? not, not just metalheads or pop listeners, to people who can really be enough open uh, to enjoy music as it is, even though we are a heavy metal band, like that's the core. Mm-hmm. We, heavy metal is actually the most uh, liberating uh, style of music because I think only in heavy metal you can go to the mo- most subtle and silent, smooth and soft and elegant into the very extreme other end, you know, loud, fast, brutal and macho and like all of that stuff and everything in between. And in heavy metal, you can do that, but you cannot do that in pop music. You yeah. cannot do that in classical music. You cannot have distorted guitars on a symphonic orchestra suddenly, you know, listening to Mozart and then mm-hmm. suddenly if you crank up power chords there. <laughs> That'd well, be fun, man. I'm, <laughs> I'd enjoy it. <laughs> but I do it, but you can do it only in heavy metal, in that's my true. opinion. And that's the thing. In metal, you can explore any genres mm-hmm. like the frames are heavy metal, but you can go outside the frames more freely than in any other genre, in my opinion. And that's why I, uh, I think it also works for mm-hmm. so many people. I've heard that some, uh, one interview I did, I heard from the interviewer that some corpse paint guys were dancing in a Beast in Black show. Yeah. <laughs> like, like really like this extreme metal fans and they enjoyed Beast in Black concert that they were dancing there. So that says something. And there's been like really, you know, elderly people like 60, 70 years old people in our shows having fun and small kids, you know, like 
even babies, like yeah. two years, three years old, who enjoy it. And we've gotten sometimes like uh, fan videos. I remember from Japan, we received some video when some really, really small kid is like grooving to some black like, songs, and that was great. You know, this is awesome. There, there's no age limit for this in black music yeah. or genre. This is awesome, man. This is awesome. And you mentioned that you have, you know, gazillion songs pretty much, uh, you know, written already. So what is your personal writing process like? I mean, if we're talking about your music composition and, you know, the framework being metal, I mean, do you write with guitar? Like you come up with the riff and then build the ambiance on top of it, or you usually sit down with the keyboard, you know, like a lot of musicians do as well, you know, and write there and then lay the guitar, you know, on melody or something like that on top of it how do you usually go off all of that all of what you said i <laughs> i use all the techniques all the approach uh, it doesn't matter what instrument there's no there's no like stiff method that i always follow mm -hmm. sometimes i get excited about the drum beat for example lately i've been hearing this uh, drum beat which i kind of almost daily I kind of jam to it mm -hmm. in my head and I'm thinking of different rhythms on top of it. I don't yet know what the melody or the riff is going to be, but I know like what the beat is uh -huh. in the background. Uh, some kind of a beat that we haven't used with Beast in Black yet, but, but I already have a feel that it probably will be on the fourth album. It's a really small difference in a kind of a two-bar loop, mm -hmm. but there's something there and I'm going to come up with some riff or a chord progression or keyboard riff or guitar riff for it. So that's just one example. Sometimes I pick a guitar, acoustic guitar or electric guitar and just noodle around mm -hmm. and I come up with nice, nice melody or sometimes I hear it just out of, out of nowhere in my head and then I just pick any instrument that's closest to me and I try to uh, play it and accompany it. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a melody, I'm sing it and then try out different chords with the guitar or a keyboard to see how it works. And, and some sounds themselves inspire you to uh, write certain type of things. If you choose a really soft, a warm pad sound on a keyboard, it takes you to a certain kind of atmosphere and mood and you start writing material that fits to that kind of an instrument. Mm -hmm. Guitar can then do other stuff. You can do also really slow and smooth and elegant or really like straightforward heavy metal riffing or some elegant melodies. Like for example, uh, in the song Ocean Deep from the previous album, there's a guitar solo that's really slow and there's like dives and bends. It's really like shows that guitar can do many different things and the sounds themselves uh, affect the selection of notes that you kind of play. This is pretty cool. And I feel like this is exactly the reason your, you know, rather diverse writing style, it, it might be the reason for the band's success and the band agglomerating so many of different types of fans, as we just spoke about, right? Both metal hats, non really traditional metal hats and so on and so forth. So, so that's, that's a really interesting concept. And, I, and another, in my personal opinion, of course, distinctive feature of uh, of Beast in Black at the moment is is of course the vocals. I mean, I'll I'll be honest with you, I I was just uh, you know blown away by Yanis's voice on this record and the range of you know the vocal techniques, the you know overall the range of his voice is uh, is just simply impressive. So do when you when you write music right now, I mean, do you write it specifically for Yanis at this point already, or you just come up with whatever suits you best and then give him the you know the freedom of laying the vocal melody and you know coming up with the with how the vocals will sound on his own? Well, I remember Yanis once told me himself that that if he cannot sing something in some range, he considers himself not good enough singer. <laughs> So that kind of gives me a lot of free, like, free style to how to write. But no, I, I do think about his voice nowadays more than in the past, mm -hmm. because I know where his chest voice, like, ends and where the head voice kind of mm -hmm. starts to sound 
profound enough and resonating enough mm-hmm. and stuff like we talked about it we know and he knows also my voice i do some singing as well so we are really aware yeah like about the transitions in our voices mm-hmm. and how the melody but Janis is really really ambitious as a singer because of the reason what i just told that yeah. he if he feels that he cannot sing some melody in certain area he feels that he's not good enough and he will practice <laughs> this is awesome man i i know i heard that before but uh, i i think this is impressive and kudos to him for <laughs> for that one man and um do you personally have you know a favorite track i mean can you just underline one track from this upcoming record which you think will completely blow everyone away you know honestly i cannot choose any track this is a cliche answer like yeah. all the tracks are your children and yeah. you cannot choose the it depends on the mood you know there are faster tracks which are great for certain mood and slower tracks better for some other mood but i think all of them share the same kind of essence which is all the tracks are built on a like a strong melody mm-hmm. there's always a post with a melody that's kind of memorable and it's like the main theme each song has a main theme and i think they all work it doesn't matter when you listen to any track you can like already kind of be absorbed into the beast in mm-hmm. black trademark style yeah. even if you're a new listener you will like get that kind of a clear pro pro profile sound profile mm-hmm. from us with any i believe so yeah <laughs> man i gotta agree with you on that one i received an album what a couple of days ago and uh the songs you know the not even the songs i mean i didn't really remember the lyrics but the melody is of a bunch of songs have been stuck in my head for several days now so you did succeed on, on that and on it being catchy and memorable i mean 100 and i have no doubt that anyone you know who will listen to a song or two even from this record will go back and listen to everything else because i mean it just gets stuck in your head uh, completely so again congrats on that one you you definitely Uh, did a great job on on that on that one and in addition to that what I, what surprised me a lot right i mean you did a couple of couple of covers as well right and uh, but those are very different songs right for those who don't know one of them is on man of war and then another one what on michael jackson right <laughs> so but you both you ma- made them sound both very much beast in black like right i mean they are very much of you know you can hear them and you can actually hear that it's beast in black so i mean how did you choose those songs and you know how was the process of making them beast black beast in black like well f- first of all i think it was in, in some backstage in in a european tour 2019 when yanis told me that hey we should cover this battle him from man war <laughs> because i used to play man war backstage one hour before going on stage mm. i play my guitar warm up and listen to some man of war song yeah. i guess they already got sick of that <laughs> always <laughs> but so i immediately like felt that yes let's do it i i, I believe we both uh heard uh, that song as a beast in black version in our heads like mm-hmm. almost immediate because we understood on a subconscious level like even that that there are all the ingredients in the man war song and in the michael jackson song they have that you know same type of chord progression simple drum beat behind the song that carry carries the uh, other instruments uh, great like melody strong lyrics catchy chorus mm-hmm. and think about it well all those things are what we have with beast in black we think so So that's why it felt already so comfortable that we just add a little bit of our own stuff, but mostly we stay really loyal to the original. I'm talking about the Man of War song. Yeah. And with the Michael Jackson song, we also stayed uh, as loyal as possible for the original, but there was more room uh, for uh, experimenting because the original song doesn't not, have yeah. that kind of a heavy instrumentation. Yeah really like it breathes really uh nicely 
there's just vocals and percussions and a little bit of guitars sometimes and a little bit of keyboards. But once again, in that song, if you really analyze it, we don't really analyze it, but as I said, we kind of instinctively feel already, hey, we mm -hmm. know these elements in this music. There are those same elements, the same kind of chord progression that Beast in Black uses, same kind of a way of making a chorus. Mm -hmm. like good milk that is catchy and it, it repeats yeah. a few times uh, per chorus and strong lyric and a straight, straightforward, simple like beat mm -hmm. behind the song. So if you think about it like that, there are so many things that match with both songs. And in the end, you realize that hey, that Man of War song, Michael Jackson song, they are not even that different. If you like pick, a, pick an acoustic guitar, play those chords, use the same instrumentation and singing style, then you realize, wow, it sounds like they could be on the same album. <laughs> but everyone just give, gives their own touch and interpretation and production. And that's also what makes them different sounding and the lyrics. But if you really strip, strip it like down to the very core, they are not that different. Like same type of chords. Yeah, and, and Michael Jackson's lyrics in that song are pretty metal. I mean, they don't really care about us. I mean, that's that's very rock and rollish slash metal head thing to say, you know, straight from the 80s. Yeah, it is. It's like a it fits to our like style ly lyric wise as well. But you know, I remember that a few times I got this question that did it, did we choose the song because of the lyrics because there's you know, nowadays there's this Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, you know, a song is just something we like very much. And we chose the song as a cover already before there was yeah. Black Lives Matter. Really? Before it happened. Wow, that's, that's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was in two, 2019, was it in the spring or something like that mm -hmm. back then? Or in the that year but but the bottom line is that whenever some song is good uh, in our opinion mm -hmm. we consider it as a possible cover song and with those songs it just instantly felt like hey yes and <laughs> Awesome, man. Awesome. I don't want to keep you here for too long, man, Anton. I, 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 I'm sure you're pretty busy. So a couple of more questions, if you don't mind, and then we'll wrap it up. But um, you, you mentioned about you doodling with the, uh, with the Man of War before the concert. Are they one of the biggest influences for you personally? And if so, and if not, I mean, who are the biggest influences musically for you? Because, again, the style of Beast in Black, I mean, I personally cannot really define it. You know, it's very hard for me. I cannot definitely say, hey, this is power metal, because, I mean... It kind of is, but it kind of isn't at the same time, you know, and, and there are so many variations of it. So where do you dig the inspiration from usually? Nowadays, I can say that the most important inspiration is the sum of all the material that you've listened to mm -hmm. through your life. And when you are a, like artist yourself, you kind of save the favorite ideas in your subconsciousness. Mm -hmm. right uh, melodies and make make riffs and all that stuff. A lot of stuff, if not all the stuff, comes from subconsciousness, where you have saved all that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a it's kind of a ocean of ideas there, mm -hmm. and they you just have to let it flow naturally. And I know that part of that like uh, inspiration, I was like feeling that uh, inspirational ocean with Manowar, Judas Priest, Wasp, and Black Sabbath, the mm -hmm. Tony Martin era Black Sabbath, mm -hmm. and UDO. I was li like heavily listening to that stuff at a certain point of my life. Mm -hmm. more, not because I don't like it, I still like it as much as I did, but I just, you know, heard so much that I think I have to, life is short, I have to <laughs> find as well yeah. so that's the simple route um, yeah definitely Man of War is in my like top three mm -hmm. influence comes to metal writing yeah. Judas Priest is my all time favorite metal band with you on that one <laughs> shaking your head virtually <laughs> oh, 
it's more like uh, what well, all kinds of old uh, game music, you know, like Nintendo, Sega, and DOS games. Mm -hmm. uh, the simple like chip tune music. Yeah, uh, from some old uh, animes. There are not nice soundtracks in animes. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get inspired by those. Well, while I drive the car, I usually listen to uh, classic radio mm -hmm. if I listen to music. I, I actually don't listen to that much radio, but if I listen to the radio, it's usually just classic radio and really? that's it. Well, that's interesting. So it's cool. Or, you know, classic heavy metal from the past, which I don't actively listen nowadays, but it's still there. I remember every note from those favorite songs. Yeah. And or like this 80s Italo disco, Eurobeat, that's what I listen to now more, mm -hmm. and this classical music. And I, nothing is disappearing, everything is just adding on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why it affects Beast in Black in a way that we have kind of ex extra colors outside of this basic heavy metal like frame. I assume Turbo was a big influence on you as well, on uh, out of Judas yeah. Priest discography. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. Uh, yeah. Defender. Screaming for Vengeance, Ram It Down, Painkiller, Turbo. Those are, some, I think, my favorite Priest albums, those five. It's been more than five years since you left, you know, uh, Battle Beast at this point, right? I mean, nowadays, do you do you guys keep in touch? I mean, do you personally keep in touch with your old bandmates or kind of the bridges are burned and not really? We, we haven't actually been in any contact since 2015. Oh, at all. So, so it's been six years, no contact. Well, sometimes it goes like this, you know. Never say never, you know. Nobody knows what future brings, but you know, at least it's uh, my time goes totally into the future, like mm -hmm. planning the future with Beast in Black. I don't feel like uh, there's a need to stay in touch mm -hmm. with my ex-band uh, members because you know the situation was. So bad at the moment when the uh, ways separated between me and them. Um, you know, it always leaves a scar. You know, some kind of a scar. And but nowadays, I don't like. Let's put it this way: like when I found it. Beast in Black in 2015, in the same year, mm -hmm. it was so insecure, like what will happen with it. Uh, it took two years until the debut album came out mm -hmm. and I had basically nothing, like everything I had to start from zero. Yeah. And after that, when we released the first song, first single, Blind and Frozen. Which was received amazingly. It was like, uh, wow seems like people like this mm -hmm. more than we expected. Mm -hmm. But I was already in such a burnout when the album was done. I kind of didn't know what... I didn't dare to hope for anything good mm -hmm. at that point. But it's turned out to be good. And after that, it's been the kind of... Our strength has grown ever since mm -hmm. steadily. And it kind of reinforces, reinforces your own kind of self-esteem mm -hmm. and you become more sure about the future and you, you know, carry certain pride from mm -hmm. what you created again mm -hmm. like and then the past kind of seems more like some kind of a school that you had to go through <laughs> in the past they just kind of needed to happen for me to be here and our bass player Mate uh, he also has his own band Wisdom mm -hmm. Hungarian Power Metal Band mm -hmm. I was talked with him, but we both felt that his band and my expand, they were kind of uh, lessons for us, mm -hmm. combining our knowledge and skills. And we pour all that into Beast in Black to make this the best possible Beast in Black we can be. Do you have one craziest story which happened to you on the road with either of the bands, uh, you know, which you can share with us? Mm. Well, there's been this Wasp tour 
our first tour, which didn't fully happen, we just played a few shows, mm -hmm. you know, show after show, we got some ridiculous demands from Wasp <laughs> or, or from Blackie, you know, basically he was unapproachable, we didn't really see him, but you could guess that the okay. commands yeah. come from him yeah, yeah. and then, then the boys came and tell us what what we cannot do and what we should do and like every day that happened and and then at some point we just decided hey uh, there's a limit and we didn't agree to their mm -hmm. terms because we were not treated properly i, I don't want to go into details and we played only four shows or five no four instead of being on the road for five weeks mm -hmm. so it ended and it turned into like a big disaster touring wise but afterwards i think how great it is that we had this really rough start and bumpy ride our first tour ever with one of my favorite bands was and we get this kind of a shitty shitty treating and but we survived it and we are now doing better than ever and that kind of even got more media attention because mm -hmm. what you know if tour would have been a normal successful metal tour and two metal bands playing in europe blah 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 successful yeah. shows sold out just done but this is what was like okay anton one of favorite bands and they're out of the tour and like what the hell and all this kind of stuff that was happening four years ago in the media mm -hmm. because of that yeah it was kind of I remember that yeah. a lot of attention a lot of attention came because of that so i think that was the, one of the most difficult situations uh, not not so crazy but, but kind of a really strange and weird way to begin the touring career <laughs> yeah with a new band that's that's fun do you do you have you ever reached out to blackie or to watch management afterwards or not you know, that kind of is done oh. and then you forgot about it done but i still enjoy listening to us to have kick ass song <laughs> i mean of course who doesn't man <laughs> that is true that is true all right anton thank you so much for your time man i really really appreciate it i just hope that you know you and all the other bands will be able to hit the road once again very very soon you know and uh i'm actually you know you're scheduled to play in kiev uh next year hopefully that will happen and i'll catch you live we'll grab a beer you know after the concert or something like that so Thank you so much, man. Um, just as a reminder for everyone, um, Beast in Black's new studio album will be out on October 29th. So make sure you check it out. Check out the singles which were released already. And I'm sure if you like, like those singles, you will absolutely be blown away by the record itself. Anton, any last word for the, for the fans? Anything you wanted to share with them? Well, thanks for the patience for waiting for this album. And, you know, take care of yourselves and, and your friends and your family. And like, stay tuned for the Beast in Black news in the social media. Like, there's always gonna be some new stuff happening since the album is out. So Perfect. things are rolling. See you in Kiev when we finally get to play there. So <laughs> <Yeah>, hopefully. <laughs> All right, Anton Kaban and everyone, thank you so much, man, and keep rocking. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Man.